morning, good morning, good morning. We welcome you to our Sunday school hour. We just want to lift up the name of the Lord and give his name the praise, the honor, and the glory because he's been truly good to us in the midst of what's going on in this world during the COVID and police brutality amongst black men. We know we can turn to God and we know that we can lean and depend on him and hold on to his unchanging hand, right? And he knows, he, he knows all, but he, he comforts all. He, he gives us that comfort. So we just ask you to lift up the name of the Lord this morning with us through, through prayer, scripture, and, and just help us, uh, you know, give his name the praise, the honor, and the glory. I woke up this morning with my mind. My mind was I tell you that I'm my mind was glory hallelujah come on y'all my mind was on Jesus hallelujah hallelujah well I woke up this morning with my mind my mind was uh, I tell you that I'm My mind was Glory, hallelujah My mind was On oh, Jesus Hallelujah Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Well, it ain't no harm to keep your mind, your mind on. I tell you that it Your mind on. Mm -hmm. Glory, hallelujah. Harm to keep your mind. Your mind on, on Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, mm -hmm. well I'm walking and talking with my mind, my mind on, I tell you that I'm walking and talking with my mind. My mind on oh, glory, hallelujah. My mind on mm. on oh, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind. My mind was, uh, I tell you that I'm with my mind was, glory, hallelujah, my mind was on Jesus, hallelujah. 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 Well, the devil don't lie. Get when your mind, your mind's on. I tell you that. The, your mind on. Glory. Hallelujah. Your mind on, on Jesus, hallelujah, 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 amen, glory be to God, amen, come on D. Yes sir, thank you Lord. Good morning, our scripture will be First Peter, the first chapter. Start at the second verse, and it reads, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fate is not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So reach the word of God. Amen. Amen. Father God, we come before you as humble as we know how. We come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts, Father God, in joy, knowing that you are God and God that has all power, Father God. Father God, we ask you right now to forgive us of all our many sins and transgressions right now, Father God. And then, Father God, we, we want to thank you one more time for your throne of grace and mercy, Father God. You allowed us to see a day that we'll never see again, Father God. And you touched us with a finger of love, Father God, and allowed us to get up, Father God, close in our right mind, Father God, and realize that we had another day's journey, Father God. And then you allowed us to come into your house one more time, Father God, on this Sunday school hour, Father God. We thank you for our pastor, Father God. Give him strength right now, Father God. We thank you for our under-shepherd, Father God. Keep give strength in him right now, Father God. Then we thank you for his wife, Father God. Give her strength, Father God. Bless all us, us, us officers right now, Father God. Give us strength, Father God. Bless all the teachers, Father God, that's going to be engaged, Father God, teaching their lesson this morning, Father God. May the, may the students, Father God, open their hearts and open up their minds. And, and Father God, give, get something out of the word that they can apply to their everyday life, Father God. Father God, we thank you right now, Father God, for letting us just come together, Father God, during this time of this COVID time, Father God. During the times of protest, Father God, of, of black men, Father God, being... Uh, police brutality, Father God. Father God, we ask you right now, Father God, go into the homes of those, Father God. Go into the hearts of those, Father God, and let them know that you have all power right now, Father God. Father God, bless this troubled nation right now, Father God, like only you can, Father God. Give us all strength, Father God. Bless the man that's going to stand and give this morning matter, Father God. Father God, speak through him, Father God, and let him know, and let him know, Father God, that it's all about you, Father God, but let us know as well it's all about you, Father God. We lift you up and we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory, Father God. Bless us all right now. Keep the friendship family, Father God, under your care, Father God, like only you can, Father God. You kept us in these two months, Father God, and engaged, and we, we just stopped to say we thank you, Father God. We thank you for giving us our passive the vision, Father God, to keep us engaged as people, Father God, in your word, Father God. So we lift you up and we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory because you're worthy, Father God. Father God, Father God, we give it all to you, Father God, right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we lift you up and give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen and thank God. We ask you right now to welcome our pastor as he comes. Give him a hand of praise, Father, right now. He's been mighty good, Father God. Thank you, Father God. My last time, I don't know this may be my last church, and this may be my last time. This may be my last time. It may be my last time I don't God bless you, God keep you. God bless you, God keep you. Good morning. To God be the glory for the things he is doing. He is doing great things for us. And we can say hallelujah. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We celebrate, uh, celebrate another day. And, and this is the day that the Lord has made. And we may as well be glad and rejoice in it. Welcome. Welcome one and all to our Sunday school, our morning manna. We don't know how long uh, we will be in this particular distance uh, separation. But we're going to continue to do our part uh, in, in, in uh, keeping each other safe, being, being, being able to tell the church when we can meet, 
Amen. And we are praying that we'll continue in this vein of worship even on today. Uh, next month we'll look at another thing, but right now we'll look at Sunday school virtually online as well as worship. And please uh, come back and be with us for our morning worship at 1045. And my brothers and sisters, if you are led of the Lord, please go to our website and, and, and be a blessing to us. Go and contribute on PayPal or on the GiveLify app and be a blessing to the church in that manner. Plant a seed in this harvest and we certainly will appreciate it. We'll be blessed this morning with our morning message, morning manner message taught by our own gifted uh, preacher, Reverend Cedric Garrett, a teacher on staff who's ready to come and bring us a word. This today is being live streamed on Facebook, it is on conference call. The area, the number is area code 831 39 831-318-0321. And then it's also being shown uh, on Zoom. We ask you to press that link and come on, join us. And you will be able to ask questions. A teacher has will have the earphones so that you can he can he can uh, address your question if you have one. But this is a serious time. Should be no jokes and no no games. This is a serious time. God bless you. Welcome to to online on, on Zoom. Thank you for uh, being on time. Also at ten o'clock, we'll begin our children's. Uh, a Sunday school class, children's Sunday school class at 10 o'clock. You've been given that number by Reverend Dom and Sister April Dunham. And then our youth uh, will meet also. You've been given your number by Deacon on Trial Cooney and Sister Cooney. We ask you all to be there. and Call your friends. Amen. Call those that need to hear a lesson because they've, uh, they've really delve into the text and they, they want to invest in your life, but they can't invest in your life if you're not available. So please go online or give a call, whatever they have um, you to do, we want you to be a part. After the morning manna Sunday school lessons, our live stream will pick up again and we want you to be a part of our morning worship. There are some announcements during our morning worship, you need to be, be online to, to hear. After the uh, uh, morning worship, we will do a YouTube to every member of the church. And we thank God that you will tap the subscribe button and the bell that you will be one of our subscribers, that you'll get a notification when we come online. Please receive our teacher uh, this morning. None other than the personage of Reverend Cedric Garrett. May God bless you and may God keep you. And thank you so much for your presence here. Certainly we give God honor and praise for our pastor, our senior leader, uh, Dr. Dunham. Amen. We are continuing to pray for him um, in this adjustment ministry. Amen. Which has been a blessing. I can't speak for anybody else, but it's been a blessing for me. We pray that God is moving in your lives by this ministry. Now, I uh, want to get right to the lesson this morning. We got quite a bit of scripture mm -hmm. uh, to deal with this morning. Uh, again, we've been dealing with the book or, or dealing with the prophets, God dealing with prophets in the Old Testament.
Testament. And God sent him a particular message on this morning. We're going to be dealing with the prophet Hosea. And our lesson this morning, uh, we're going to be in the 11th chapter this morning of Hosea. 11th chapter Hosea. of Hosea. Now, uh, 11th chapter of Hosea, uh, we're going to be in the 11th chapter, uh, verses 1 through 2. And then we're going to be in verses 7 through 10. And then we're going to be in chapter 12 itself, 1 through 2. And then 6 through 14. Now, there are some scriptures in between that because we are the Sunday school class. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it for granted that you're going to go and study those yeah. verses in between uh, the verses we're dealing with today. Um, and so some of those verses have been left out, uh, not by mistake, on purpose, that we can try to cover the entire lesson uh, and give a synopsis or a snapshot of the lesson uh, versus going verse by verse um, in this lesson this morning. Now, the, the topic this morning uh, deals with measure up. That's our lesson this morning. For March 31st, measure, measure up. Measure up. Uh, now, our lesson is broken up into blocks in the lesson. Uh, we have blocks of instruction and insight in this particular lesson. Now, Again, this lesson may sound redundant. It may sound like we're saying the same thing or teaching the same thing. Well, uh, remember, God deals with different prophets, but God is saying the same thing, right? He is saying, uh, look, look, I'm your God. I love you. I want you to walk in righteousness. I want you to straighten up. When you don't walk in righteousness, I'm going to correct you. I want you to respond to the correction properly, and then I want you to walk straight and go on about the promise that I've given you. Mm. Right, that's the lesson in every one of these lessons. They, they all have their, their own paradigms to them, but in, in, in bulk, that's what all of these Old Testament lessons deal with. They deal with God speaking to each prophet, which shows us that's the kind of God we have. He can speak to several different prophets say the same thing to different people, but have the same meaning. Lord, have mercy. That tells us that God does not change. He doesn't change today, yesterday, neither is he going to change on tomorrow. So we look at God's message this morning through the eyes and the mouth and the ears of Hosea. That's how we need to look at the lesson this morning. We, look, we need to look at it from his eyesight, his mouth, and his ears. Now, even though God uses uh, Hosea's eyesight, his mouth, and his ears, it's the Lord's word. Uh, the whole premise of this lesson uh, is standard. Uh, our standard must measure up and mirror God's standard. That, that's what the lesson says. It says measure up. And, and, and that's important because a lot of us are trying to measure up to society. Right. We're trying to measure up to look up and have presidents to look up to and yeah. Congress to look up to. He says, God says, I'm the standard. Uh -huh. And he tells Israel this in particular, that the standard is me and you need in, in turn, because you are my children, right. you need to raise your standard. Amen. Your standard, children of God, must match God's saying, my standard. That's what God is teaching us. He says, your standard must mirror mine. In this lesson, then, we must ask, what is the standard? All right. All right. Well, in particular, two, two things that Hosea's lesson calls out today, love and justice. God says, in the standard is, I love you, but I want you to love me back. And also, you need to have justice. If you love God, you'll execute the right justice. But if you don't love God, you'll do anything to anybody, anywhere, Mercy. anytime. Mercy. That's what's going on. They, they, they walked away from the love of God. Now, uh, what does God want from each of us? Well, we'll see in the lesson. For each one of us, God's love 
uh, is rooted here, right? Uh, it's rooted, everything that God does for us is rooted, listen now, is rooted in love. Let me say it real slow. Everything that God does for us, whether it is um, whooping us, blessing us, changing directions, giving us a different direction, a new perspective, is done in love. It's number one, it's because of love. Number two, it's through his love. Number three, it's, it's through his love. Number four, whatever he does is surrounded by his love. Now, you check the record. You check it, and everything that God has done for us is in association of his love. Right? Love is attached with every single thing that God does. Uh, that, that's how much God is in love with us. The question this morning is, how much are we in love with him? Right? I mean... There's a difference between loving somebody and being in love. You know, just loving somebody is conditional. It's temporary. Uh, it, it works today, but it don't work tomorrow. That's just loving. But when you're in love, uh, it, it is, listen, in this lesson we're going to see, they have with God a conditional love, but God has with them a covenant love. Watch the text now. In his love, his covenant, it must be, when you're in love, it has a level of spirituality to it. It has a level of emotionalism to it. It has a level of physical to it. Not only that, but it has a level of lasting. That's what being in love with, no matter what goes on, you're going to be in love with that person. The ups, the downs, the wrongs, the rights, the misunderstandings. And so God is in love with us. God is in love with Israel. But watch this. Israel only just loved God. They weren't in love with him. Because it was conditional. They kept going back. When you're in love with somebody, you can't keep doing what you're doing to hurt them. I wish y'all see the text. I wish y'all see the text. The te Hosea. Hosea's name, really, this is just for our background. Hosea's name means salvation. No. When our relationship, and I'm getting to the text, when our relationship is right with God, we then in turn, or it will in turn, be right with one another. Amen. A lot of us are trying to fix relationships with one another. Well, we can't get that straight because we, we don't have the relationship with God straight. You can't fix what's wrong when you don't honor what's right. Mm. right Let me try it one more time, real right. slow. This right. Sunday school. You cannot fix what's wrong when you won't honor what's right. right. A covenant relationship is one that is laced. Listen now, here, here's what it looks like. A covenant relationship is what God has with us, what God expects from us, but here's the makeup of a covenant relationship. Number one, there's obedience laced in it. Mm -hmm. In a covenant relationship. Yes. Uh -huh. Right? Uh, not, number two, there's repentance in a covenant relationship. Oh, yeah. Number three, there's sacrifice. Right. Now, I'm giving you all of these so as we walk through the lesson, can you see obedience? All right. Would you be able to see repentance? Would you be able to see the sacrifice? Not only that, but there's holiness in a covenant relationship. I'm talking about between us and God now. There's also forgiveness. And the question again this morning is, do we measure up to God? Is our covenant relationship with God, is it in obedience? Is it in repentance? Have we sacrificed? Are we walking in holiness? And are we are a forgiven people? Jose's message is, uh, is directed and delivered to the northern kingdom. Now keep that in mind. The kingdom is split. And he's dealing with, we've seen through all of these prophets, God deals with each side of Israel. Today, he's dealing with Jose's particular message is that he's going to deliver 
a message and is directed to the northern side. Who is the northern side? The kingdom of Israel. They are, watch this, here the people we're dealing with in the Hosea's text, they are affluent. In other words, they got money. They pay, okay? They got it. Whatever y'all call it, Skrilla, Green, whatever it is. The cheddar, they got it. Now, what happens is when people of God get to a place of affluent, got to be careful because what happens is when you start getting stuff and things by the wrong means without God blessing you, you won't be, before long you'll start doing whatever you want, stop listening to God, and watch this, you'll start rebelling against God. Everything that they have, they got, they pay, they got everything. But watch this, they got it because they, was, they were doing injustice. Yeah. Right, right. This is what happens. The land is beginning to rot. Uh, because of their injustice and their wrongdoing, they live, watch this, people in Hosea's time, they lived above the law. Right. So they thought. You know, we see that today. People think because they got enough money, and they have resources and riches yeah. and real, real estate yeah, that they can live above the law. Mercy, and God says, they may do that, but my people, Come on, right. no, you don't operate like that. Right. God says, you move when I tell you to move. Yeah. All right, now. Yeah. You respond the way I asked you to respond. Uh -huh. You deliver justice the way I've, I've taught you to deliver. Yeah, right. And God says, as my child, you cannot do this. Mm. Now, now, let's look at the text in chapter 11. Remember, we're going to do some verses in chapter 11, and then we're going to jump to chapter 12. Uh -huh. Okay, stay with me. Chapter 11, God's love for Israel. That's what this whole text really deals with. Verse 1 picks up and says, When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Now, Hosea is talking, he's talking on again on behalf of who? God. But watch what do, God does. The whole text is in a relational kind of language. He says, God says, I want you to see how much I love you. I want to name you as my child. But I want to give you the example that you're a son that I have called out of Egypt. Right? I want you to see the relationship. You know, oftentimes in the Old Testament, you'll see the writers, they will all oftentimes uh, demonstrate a father's love uh, showing a relationship. Right? We see this throughout the Old Testament. We see it in the New Testament. We see the foreshadowing of God working as our dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are his children. We see it when the boy left home and said, give me all my goods. Right, right. He left home and his daddy said, come on back home. But that was a foreshadowing of what God really does for us. When we leave and we ask for all of our stuff that we think we, that he owes us and God lets us go out and bang our head, do our thing, smoke our dope, drink our drink, right? And he'll step back and still open his arms and say, come on back home. That's the kind of God we have. God says, my messages are up here, but I expect that you're my child. I remember the old folks were saying, listen, what you do in this house, yeah. well, right? These are the rules in this house. Yeah, and then some children would come back, not me, come back and say, but they doing this. No, and no, the no. old folks would come back and say, I don't care what they doing down the street. Right. Come on. Right. What I'm teaching you in this house, this house. God uh -huh. is saying, I don't care what the other nations do, Israel. Yeah. What I taught you in this house. Yeah. This house. He says, I loved him. God is really saying in verse 1, I've rescued you. He says, watch what he does. He uses uh, Egypt as he brought them out. Now, again, this first verse is a prophecy. Uh -huh. If you look in the uh, second chapter of Matthew, uh, around the 15th verse, I believe, you'll see this exact quote in Matthew. Mm -hmm. It is a prophet. What happens? God, again, is showing us a foreshadowing of what, what happened with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He brings them out of Egypt. He protects them. He protects him. And so God uses this in this first verse of Hosea. He says, you're my child, I'm your daddy. That's important. Verse 2 says, as they called them, 
So they went from them that sacrificed unto Balaam and burned incense and graven images. In other words, God says, you're my child in verse 1. I'm your daddy in verse 1. We have a relationship in verse 1. But in verse 2, watch this. Uh, the more I call you, the more you turn from me. That's God talking. Wait a minute. The more I love you as your daddy, the more you rebel against me. And he says, they sacrifice unto Balaam, and they burn incense. See, part of the problem in this text is they have left God to go to idol worship. That's it. That's it. They left God. Look, listen, here's what God is saying. If you're going to leave me, at least leave me for somebody bigger and better. Tell my wife, if you're going to leave me, don't leave me for another woman. At least leave me for a better man. <laughs> Lord, mercy have mercy. Lord. Mercy Lord. God says, you're not only leaving me, but you're going to something worse. You're going to a God that can't move you, but you can move him. God says, you left it. The more I love you, the worse you become. No. Sin is against God. Uh -huh. yes, sir. They take it further, though. Mm -hmm. They not only sin against God, they hurt God. Right, right. Deacon Trail, they left a covenant, yes, sir. or they broke a current covenant, uh -huh. and started, here's what hurt God. They started another covenant my, 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 my. with a false God. You leave mom and daddy's house because you don't want to obey them. You leave mom and daddy's house because they have rules and regulations. You leave mama and daddy's house because they feed you grits and eggs and bacon, and you want to break that relationship and go to an idol house. And nothing worse than a disobedient child. A parent can take a lot of stuff, but when a child that they've been providing for Ooh, breaks, get too big for the britches that the parents pay for, yes, that the parents have provided, when they get too big, nothing worse to a parent than breaking the current covenant of the house my, 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 my. and going somewhere else and starting a new covenant. Right. That's going to end up in devastation anyway. But God loves us. God loves us. He loves us. Now watch. I, I believe the text now, we're in verse 1 and verse 2. But then we jump to verse 7. And if you have a question for the college students, just jump in at any time. Verse 7 says, we're still in the same chapter, and my people, watch the text real close now, don't run over this, my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they call them to the most high, none of all would exalt him. Watch what he says. He says, my people are bent. He uses this, this Hebrew word, tala bent. They are hung up on this. Watch that. What are they bent from? They are bent from and holding on to that they're just going to backslide. Now, God uses this particular Hebrew word, uh, backsliding, and, and the word here, uh, meshavah, is it deals with Watch now. It deals with turning away, but it also deals with apostasy. Mm -hmm. They leave God. Mm -hmm. They are bent on backsliding. Now, God doesn't, uh, uh, that, that, that word backsliding is a theological synonym, code word, for sin. <laughs> right. that, that's what it is. But he particularly uses backsliding, because some of us don't even like that word in the church today, backsliding. 
God uses that word because you can't backslide from something you hadn't been up front with in the, in the first year. In other words, God says, you had the right relationship up front. And you, you backslid from that. You Michael Jackson from that. You did a, you did a glide back from that. God said, you had the right relationship. We were together. Now you're backsliding, which says there's a separation and a gap. And then watch the text. The Lord says, they've been on it. You ever seen people that just, they're going to do wrong regardless? They are, they're going to hang on to just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sin the best way I can. No matter what God tells me, I'm his child. You ever see a parent go through and deal with a child that no matter what they do for them, they get worse and worse. Worse and worse, yeah. They don't want to listen. They refuse. It's not that they can't listen. They are refusing to listen. Right, 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 right. They're refusing to repent. Now, God is laying all of this out. He says, you're my child. I want you to know that the first thing. Second thing is, I want you to notice your behavior. And God says in verse 7, you're backslided. That's how bad your behavior is. Because a lot of times, we don't tell our children how bad they are. Right. We tell them all the good stuff. Yes. But we got to be honest with them. We got to tell them when they're wrong. Too. Right. Right. Lord, have mercy. Right. Right. In the best way now. Now, I'm not trying to tell them, right. you know, call CPS in. But you got to. You got to tell them, you're doing good, and you're right, but when you're wrong. Yes, sir, let them know. Right, right. Got to let them know. Help you, help you. And every now and then, you got to stand up and tell your child, look, I, I haven't forgotten now. Uh, I'm still dead. Yes, sir. Tell them. I know you do that very well, too. He says, they are backsliding. And watch what he says at the end of verse 7, class. He says, none at all would exalt him. He says they're backsliding, and they won't even call God's name. They won't even lift him up. Wait a minute. You sit at the table, you come home and eat dinner, eat the pork chops, and then you leave to go back to do what you're doing. In other words, you only call God when you need something. You ever seen this? Yes, sir. Mama, I need a few dollars. Daddy, I need a hundred dollars. I need a few this. They only call you when they need God says, no, 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 no. This is a covenant relationship. Not only do you eat in my house, but you abide by the rules yes. and you stay here. Yes, right, sir. right, right, right. Uh -huh. You can't come here and like this is a fast food, come eat and leave, go do your own thing. No, God says, no. God says, your standards need to come up. And you wonder why society around you is messed up because your standards with me is not right. God says, I'm in love with you, but I expect you to be in love with me. Tina Turner's song uh, a couple years back, What's Love Got to Do With It? I want to tell you everything. everything. Watch the text. I got a rush. Verse 8 says, How shall I give thee up Ephraim? God is still talking. Now, when God uses the word Ephraim, he's still talking about the same people. Right? Israel sometimes had multiple names. You know, Junior, Bug, you know, whatever. They had the same name. Mama called you sometimes, you know, she calling you, especially when she get mad, she call you the other child's name. Still the same name. Israel is still Israel, who he's talking about. But he's using their name because they were the largest tribe out of those tribes. Uh -huh. So he particularly calls them out. So he uses the word class, Ephraim. Y'all see that? Yes, sir. How shall I deliver thee? This is what God is saying. God already knows the answer, but he has a question mark. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? Here's what God said. After all you... All the badness and the things you've done, I still can't give you up. God says, I love you so much, and all the hurt that you've done to me and against me and toward me, I still cannot give you up. That's what God is teaching us in modern time now. God says, as bad as we've been and stuff we keep doing, I still can't give you up. My goodness. He says, how shall I deliver thee, Israel? Deliver to who? To your enemy. Uh, how shall I make thee at my? Yeah. How shall I set thee as Zebulun, 
My heart is turned within me. My repentance are kindled together. God uses two particular areas here. Watch what he does. He uses two particular areas. God says, after all of this, I can't turn my back on you. And then watch what he says. He says, I've named two places that I've done that to. These two places are in the vicinity and the valley of Sodom and Gomorrah. Let me try it one more time. God names in verse 8, Atma and Zobelum. My heart is turned within me. My repentance are kindled together. God is saying, I can do it if I want to. I'm not going to do it. To these two places, they are in the vicinity and the valley of Sodom and Gomorrah. Y'all know what happened there. God completely destroyed them. God says, I'm not going to do that to you. I love you too much. Even though your behavior is like you in Sodom and Gomorrah. God says, I love you so Wait a minute. I'm in love with you. That's why God says in John 3, 16, for God so loved. What he's saying, uh, he didn't just love us, he was in love with us. And sent his best for us. And every time we look at our present day relationships with one another, with our parents, uh, grandparents, whoever it may be, we've got to know how much God loves us. Uh He gives us those parents, parental parents, uh, uh, relationships that we can see ultimately his love for us. Parents cannot explain how much they love their children. They really, they can't even really put it into words. So a lot of times they do stuff to show them. Right. That's what God says. I'm telling you I love you, but I'm going to do something for you. Thank you Lord. And I'm going to even protect you from your own self. Right. Thank You're so crazy and so silly sometimes that you don't even know when you're in the wrong. Right. Right. And sometimes I got to go snatch you from yourself. Yeah. That's what God is teaching. He says, I've kindled it. God says, I've kept my anger. I'm not going to treat you that bad. Now, in verse 8 and verse 9, this is the definition of God's mercy. Mercy is holding back what you deserve. Oh, yes, it is. That's what God is teaching us. When you're on your college campuses. When you're in your college dorm, yes. when you're dealing with your college boyfriends or girlfriends, uh-huh. God says, nothing wrong with your relationship, but I want you to remember that you serve and, and, and you serve a holy God. Yes, sir. So your basis and your foundation is the standard wherever you are. Go ahead, uh-huh. Tracy, you talk to your basis is the standard of my living. So your boyfriend and your girlfriend has to bring their standard up to your standard, hey. and your standard matches God's standard. Right. That's what God is teaching us. He's telling the church, your standard, you've been living below the standard of God. Uh, God says, I have a standard up here. What is that standard? To walk in holiness. What is that standard? To always be perfect? No. But to know you have a perfect God. And that we're seeking after him. Uh God says, your standards need to come up. Are y'all with me? God always uses, watch this. God always uses, he goes back. Verse 9, watch this. And I would execute the fierceness of mine anger. I would not turn to destroy you in Ephraim, for I am God and not man. Listen to what God said. Y'all would have probably did this. But he says, I'm God, the Holy One, in the midst of thee. And I would not enter into the city. God says, here's how I operate. <laughs> if it were man, man would do something different. Yeah. Right. But God wants them to understand who he is. Now, when he goes back, God always, listen now, God always uses a reference point to remind us of his repentant anger against our reprobate attitude. Yeah. Mm. Let me try it one more time. God always uses a reference point, your past. To remind us what we did. Mm. That his repentant anger, he was mad with us, but he ain't no more. Because of our reprobate attitude, because we had a poor, bad attitude. And not only was our attitude bad, we had a bad heart. Y'all there? Verse 10. 
verse 9, verse 10. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When shall he roar? Then the children shall tremble. See, God is establishing who he is. He says, I will destroy you. Right? So, in the first couple of verses, we deal with the relationship. In the second part of the verses, we deal with God relinquishing. And then we deal with God asking us to return. Now, let's, 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 let's flip over to chapter 12. We're closing. Y'all there so far? A covenant relationship is about standing. Now, chapters 12, we're going to begin at verse 1, okay? Verse 1, still talking to who? Ephraim, which is Israel, which is the northern. He says, watch this, Ephraim feeded on wind and followed after the east wind. He daily increased lies and desolation, and they do make a covenant with the Assyrians. And all is carried into Egypt. God says, y'all been doing everything and anything. He says, watch this, watch this, what he says, class. Ephraim, Israel, they feed it on wind. They go with every wind and doctrine. That's what the Ephesian writer said. It says the new church, even the New Testament church, don't be carried away with every wind and doctrine. Doctrine translated teaching. He says, but here's what Israel doing. They doing in and everything. They are selling, they are stealing. They're stealing, selling back what they stole, my, my, taking the money. They, they're doing everything. He says they're taking all into Egypt. They're going out of in enemy territory. Watch this. The place where I brought them out of, they keep returning to the dope house. They keep returning to the corner. He says, I brought them out of Egypt. Y'all know Egypt is representative of a dark place, of a dark past, of a dark presence. And God says, I delivered you from a past, a presence, and a place, and you keep going back there. God says, I'm begging you to return home. Have mercy, Lord. That's what God is speaking. He said, return home. The Lord, verse 2, the Lord had also a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob. Here's what God does. He references Jacob. Mm. Y'all remember Jacob's life, don't you? Yes. Jacob was a hoodlum. Mm. Jacob stole birthrights and blessings yes. from his own brother. Right. Uh, and then Jacob got so bad that he thought he could wrestle with God. Y'all know who won that fight. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he thought he can have a WWF with God, and God says, and then Jacob, after God get, got through uh, disjointing him, he says, don't let me go until you bless me. He references Judah, and that's what God does. He will reference our past, but he also shows us a representative who was doing the same thing we were doing. To show you that, listen, if you keep selling drugs, that don't change. You got two reasons. You got two ways. You're going to the grave or you're going to jail. Right. Uh -huh. If right. you keep doing this behavior, ain't a, ain't a couple ways out. You do this or you do that. Yeah. He's telling the people of God, if you keep on doing this, the end result is. Have mercy, Lord. Mm. That's the kind of God we serve. Yes, he, he warns us yes. before we break our own self. We can never come back and say, well, God didn't tell me that. No, no. God gives us chance after chance after time after time after moment. Right. Somebody shout grace. grace. Not only does God give mercy, but he gives grace. Grace, grace is what uh, is unmerited favor. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Mercy of God is holding back what you should get. Here it is. God says, I have the both of them in the balance of my hand. I should be giving you this, but I'm giving you that. For every sin, for every time you did this, and nobody knew but me and you. And aren't you glad sometimes the stuff we've done, God doesn't tell anybody? Have mercy, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Verse 6, we're closing. Therefore, turn thou to thy God. Keep mercy and judgment and wait on God. God says, I've shown you your past, but now I want you to walk in righteousness. 
But if you don't, I'm going to deal with it. God says, I've shown you how much I love you. I'm in love with you. Can't you just love me back? Yeah. Can't you just show me some appreciation sometime? And just talk. Look, God doesn't ask for much. He just asks us to tell him thank you sometimes. Thank you. And then he says, I just want you to exalt me and praise me. But when you start worshiping idol gods and doing your own thing, you'll think you're praising God when you're really not. Right. You know, you think you'll come to church and check off the checklist. Amen. I've done my Sunday morning thing so I can go back to doing my other Monday Amen. through Saturday thing. Right. <laughs> he uses Jacob. Right? He uses Jacob. Verses 6, verses 7, verses 8, verses 9, verses 10. He is a merchant. The battles of his deceit are in his hand. He loveth to oppress. He's talking about them. Uh-huh. Right? The oppression. And Ephraim said, yet I become rich. Here's what they said. Well, I become rich. I pull my own boots up by my own straps. Well. I have found me out substance. That's what they're saying. When you get beside yourself, you don't listen to God anymore. You're saying, I made it ah. on my own. Ah. Uh, mm. Mississippi Mitchell preaches the message. Where, where a, a, a guy finally gets to college, he graduates college, and he finally, he's a doctor, he's a lawyer now, and he comes in and his mama is staying with him, and he finally comes in and tells his mama, I'm sick of you now. You've gotten old. Yeah. I'm going to put you in a nursing home. My, my, my. And his mama asked, why would you do this to me? He's like, she said, I put you through college. and He said, everything I've gotten, i got on my own. I graduated college on my own. I got my first job on my own. And mama said, yeah, all of that is true. When you went down to the recruiter office on Friday to go to college, that is true. But what you don't remember is, or what you don't know is, I went down there on Thursday and talked to the college recruiter. It is true that you got your first job at the little grocery store on the corner. Yeah, but, but what you don't know is, you went down there Saturday to ask for the job, uh, but I went on Friday to ask the man to give you a job. So you didn't get where you are because of your own bootstraps. Right. And I want to help you today, whether you're a college student, whether you're grown up, or whoever you are, wherever you are, somebody helped you to get where you are by the will of God. God says, verse 9, I am that Lord, thy God, from the land of Egypt, yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles. I'm closing. God says, I'm going to take you, verse 9, watch what he says. I'm the God that's going to make you dwell in tabernacles again. God says, I'm going to take you from the big house and put you back in the outhouse. Uh-huh. See, that's the problem. God has delivered us from outhouses to big houses, and we've got the big head. Yeah. We drive bigger cars, bigger houses, bigger bank accounts, right? And we got the big head. God says, I will take you from the big house and put you back in an outhouse. He told them, I'm going to take you and make you get back in a tent or tabernacle. He'll take everything you have. Why? Because he loves us. Watch this. You mean God will take everything he has because, it, yeah, to get us back to a relationship with him. And sometimes he has to take us from something uh-huh. to get us back to something. Yes, sir. He says, verse 10, I'm closing. I have spoken by the prophets. I have multiplied visions. God said, I've done everything for you. I give you different prophets. I've given you Hosea. I've given you all these other guys. He says, I've done everything for you. Similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. And he says, and though the prophets, I will bring destruction. I told the preachers to tell you that I'm going to bless you, but I'm going to use the preachers to tell you, the prophets to tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to curse you too. Don't tell them I'm going to whoop them. Well. Verse 11, in their iniquity in Gilgal, surely they are vanity, the sacrifice bullets in Gilgal. Here God uses reference points again. Yea, their are altars are as heaps in the furrows of the field. They build idol gods in places, and, and, and they built them all over the places, and they've gone to that. And God says, when I get through, when the prophets get through dealing with y'all, not only will y'all come back, but everything that you build up will come down. Yes, sir. Verse 13, 
Verse 12, and Jacob fled. Here God references Jacob again. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria, and Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. Remember, God uses Jacob here, but remember what his name was after he had met God. It was Israel. So what he's saying here, Jacob had to end up because of his own attitude and his behavior. He had to do things that he said he never would do. Be careful when you say, I ain't going to do something. Because God will take the ain't and move it back to you. Be careful when you say, I ain't going to never do that. I'll never. You better be careful when you're dealing with God. Have mercy, Lord. Verse 13. And by the prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, was he preserved? Verse 4, last verse. Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. Therefore shall he leave his blood upon him. And his reproach shall, he, shall his Lord return. God says, if you don't straighten up, same message, I got something for you. But I'm standing here with my arms wide open. You got all the chance in the world. I want you to live up to a standard. Don't worry about uh, treating people right until you learn how to love me. When you love me, you'll treat people right. When you do, and when you're in love with me, you won't have attitudes in church. When you love me, you don't mind giving when you've been asked to give. When you love me, when you're in love with me, We've got to stop making excuses. God is holding each one of us accountable to have a standard. Not for one another. Stop trying to live up to people's expectations and live up to the Lord's expectations. If we learn to serve the Lord, God will provide for us. I hear him say, I'll never leave you. Lord, help me today. I'll never forsake you. God says, I'm a rock in a weary land. He says, I'm sheltered in a time of storm. He says, I need you to trust me. And so God is teaching us Sunday school this morning that we should always measure up to him and give him all the praise and all the glory. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise this morning. We honor God this morning again for his word. And we thank you. Uh, If you have any questions, Sunday school. Uh, especially at college, you can always reach out to the pastor and uh, and then he'll relay those questions out to the teachers. Amen. 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 We're going to dismiss right now so we can prepare to go into worship. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Pray now that your word has stirred us up, that it will remind us of your sovereignty, of your goodness. We thank you in advance for not killing us last night. We thank you for your mercy. We appreciate your grace. We thank you for every little thing you've done. We thank you for the big things, but every little thing. You woke us up, started us on our way. We thank you, God. Thank you for the trouble we didn't see in you protecting us. Thank you, God, for this ministry. Dr. Dunham, continue to bless him and his staff. Bless now this video ministry. Bless, God, what you're doing. We thank you. Woo, feel like shouting. Thank you. We give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. We honor you right now. In Jesus' name.